Extensive research has shown a tendency for adults who were mistreated as children to experience poor physical and mental health, but the exact mechanisms remain unclear. Alice Palmos and his colleagues at King's College London investigated this relationship and made an unexpected discovery. Does a rough childhood put the body's defense system in high alert later in life? This is an important question. It could trigger episodes of low mood and depression in adulthood. One in four adults worldwide say they were maltreated as children. That is, they were abused or neglected. In the UK alone, more than 50,000 child cruelty cases were reported between 2014 and 2015. These numbers are very concerning because maltreatment has serious consequences for development. It can cause learning difficulties and problematic social behavior later in life. And it is also at the root of many health and mental issues. The possible consequences for their health and mental conditions are diverse. Studies have found that it can affect the body in different ways including changes in genes, damage in parts of the DNA, and rising levels of the stress hormone cortisol. Also, it activates the immune system, which is the body's self-defense system, putting it in a state of alert. This state of alert is what doctors define as inflammation, and it typically provokes pain, swelling, and tiredness, although it can also go unnoticed. And why is this important? Research suggests that in response to bad experiences in early life, the body's defense system goes on high alert and sends out messengers sounding the alarm to prepare an inner army ready to fight a potential enemy. These messengers are substances called cytokines and C-reactive proteins, which produce inflammation, as we mentioned before. So, when these substances are present in the body, they are known as inflammation markers. Inflammation can lead to mental health problems, like periods of low mood known as depression or even major depression. Therefore, psychiatrists and scientists are keen to understand why the body prepares to fight and what exactly triggers inflammation hoping to find ways to prevent its undesirable consequences. This is what Palmos and his team decided to investigate, publishing their results in 2019. Their aim was to find the mechanisms by which a rough childhood could lead to periods of low mood later in life. They wonder if maltreatment produced a particular type of inflammation that increased the risk of suffering depression. Understanding this connection could help identify and treat depression more accurately and effectively. Here is what they did. They collected blood samples and checked for 41 inflammatory markers, keeping only the 34 markers that passed quality control. These samples came from two group groups of participants, one with 164 people suffering from major depression who did not respond to treatment, and another one with 301 individuals with no symptoms of depression. Within each group, some participants had suffered from childhood maltreatment, which was assessed with a documented questionnaire. They analyzed the levels of inflammatory markers in the first group, those suffering from depression. They compared the markers of those maltreated as children and those who had a normal childhood. If the markers in the abuse group were somewhat different, it could indicate a new specific diagnosis, an inflammatory subtype of depression. This could improve their treatment by adding targeted anti-inflammatory drugs to their usual treatment. They did the same analysis in the healthy group. If mentally healthy people who were maltreated as children had unique components in their immune system, it could help scientists discover what is needed to develop resilience. 
identifying these variations in the immune systems could protect people with early life mistreatment from depression in adulthood. But their findings puzzled them as they contradicted the previous research. They found no significant association between childhood maltreatment and inflammatory markers in any group. This meant there was no subtype of inflammatory depression due, due to childhood distress and that inflammation was not a mechanism that granted resilience against depression after childhood maltreatment. This outcome was in some sense disappointing as it took away the hope for new, more effective diagnosis and treatments. Why were the results so different from previous research? And what did it mean? The main difference was that, unlike other studies, Palmos Group included in their analysis additional factors, besides maltreatment. They considered variables that could also influence inflammation, ranging from socioeconomic status, ethnicity and smoking habits to physical conditions, in order to avoid incorrect associations. And here is where the interesting outcome emerged. They found that one variable related to weight, the body mass index, known as BMI, significantly influenced key inflammatory markers associated with depression and maltreatment. This is likely because of fat tissue may release substances that cause inflammation on their own. This outcome led to a new approach for reducing inflammation and the consequent risk of depression. Regardless of what triggered the state of alert in the participants' immune systems, managing their weight through a healthy diet and regular exercise could help reduce excessive inflammation. This is a key conclusion, but how much confidence can we place in Palmos Group's results? The study has strong points. They used an extensive number of inflammatory markers and thoroughly assessed childhood maltreatment with a comprehensive group of participants. Notably, they included a broad range of factors to determine whether a rough childhood led to inflammation or if other factors were responsible for it. However, this study has a critical weakness. It only captures a moment in time and does not track the evolution of inflammatory levels since childhood. All samples were collected once from adult participants, providing only a snapshot of the relationship between maltreatment and inflammation. In a nutshell, Palmas Group challenges previous research by finding no significant association between a rough childhood and inflammation. Instead, they highlight a novel factor, the body mass index, that might play a more important role as the origin of inflammation. Their results suggest that a balanced diet and exercise as part of the treatment may help control inflammation and future episodes of low mood and depression. Considering the study's strengths and limitations, this finding may guide future research toward more targeted treatment, lowering the risk of depression in adulthood. If you are curious and would like to read their investigation, here is the link to the study. Thank you for listening.